folks say that learning financial accounting is like learning a new language. And anytime you're learning a new language, you're bound to make some mistakes. Let's talk about six of the most common mistakes that uh, students make when they're first learning financial accounting. Big picture, the accounting cycle is a process by which we record transactions that can be reliably measured in dollars, make some adjusting journal entries for timing differences, prepare our financial statements, close our temporary accounts, revenue, expenses, and dividends, and start all over again. When a transaction occurs that can be reliably measured in dollars, we record it with journal entries. We debit and credit specific accounts. Debit means left, credit means right. In this instance, the company sold stock to Freddie and his friends. They got cash, so we debit cash, we credit common stock. We do not debit cash from sale of stock because there is no account on our balance sheet called cash from sale of stock. There's just an account called cash. It's an asset. It goes up when we receive cash and goes down when we pay cash out. So we debit and credit specific accounts. If we have to tell a story, if we have to use a phrase, if we have to use a sentence, we do that in the memo section. Secondly, journal entries always balance. If we have $50,000 worth of debits, we have to have $50,000 worth of credits. That's how our accounting equation stays in balance. Remember the accounting equation is assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. If each individual journal entry balances, our accounting equation, and by extension, our balance sheet stays balanced. As part of the accounting cycle, we prepare a trial balance to make sure all our debits equal all our credits. And after we make adjusting journal entries, we prepare an adjusted trial balance. In both those situations, the accounts must be listed in a special order. Assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses. That's because we'll use that adjust a trial balance to create our financial statements, which is the whole point of the accounting cycle. And we'll start at the bottom with our income statement, then we'll prepare our statement of retained earnings, then our balance sheet. So we have to list the accounts in a special order, assets, liabilities, owner's equity, revenue, and expenses. Fourth, revenue and expense accounts appear on the income statement only. They do not appear on the balance sheet. So here's the GAPS income statement. There's a revenue account, they call it net sales, and they subtract a bunch of expenses to get their net income. You do not see cost of goods sold or operating expenses, or for that matter, sales on the balance sheet. Eventually, revenue and expenses get to the balance sheet because sales minus expenses gives us our net income. Net income gets closed into retained earnings because retained earnings at the beginning plus then income minus dividends gets us retained earnings at the end. And that retained earnings at the end number appears on the balance sheet. But it's really important to realize that revenue and expense accounts do not appear on the balance sheet directly. Fifth, all our financial statements, including the trial balance and the adjusted trial balance, have account titles. Not only do we have a title of what the statement is at the top, but we have to have account titles within the statement. For example, preparing an income statement without the account titles would be about as meaningful as preparing a report on the American Revolution timeline with just the dates. We need to know what these dates correspond to. We need to know what these numbers correspond. Our financial statements need to not only have the title of the statement at the top, but also the accounts listed. And we usually list the most recent fiscal year closest to the account titles. Finally, accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. It hangs out with the assets, but has a credit balance. Remember the normal balance for an asset account is a debit balance but accumulated depreciation shows the world how much we've used up of a fixed asset. For example, Rojas, Cor Rojas Corporation has written off, has used up about 20% of the value of this uh, building they have. It originally cost them $70,100. They've already booked $15,000 worth of accumulated depreciation. So when you're making your balance sheet, be sure to put accumulated depreciation right next to the asset to which it belongs. Do not fall into the trap of putting it on the right-hand side of the balance sheet. It will still balance, 
but accumulated depreciation is a contra asset account. It hangs out with the assets but has a credit balance. Hope those help.